This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. Are you having trouble choosing your character for your next playthrough of Outside? I don't blame you considering there's literally millions upon millions to choose from. So in this video, instead of showcasing a specific class and all of its permutations like I usually do, I'm going to talk about the different playstyles available in the game. That way you can gauge your interest and see which style you think seems like the most fun to you, and use that to make a decision about which character to main. This video is going to be specifically about fighting styles. This is less important for support, builder, use social, and tank mains. But for the solo players out there, it's super important to understand how your build works and what to expect when you encounter another player using a build you're unfamiliar with. Anyways, when deciding how you want your character to function in battle, you need to consider the four basic fighting styles. Those are Grappler, Rushdown, Facing, and Projectile. The Grappler build's goal is to prevent their opponent from attacking or escaping while reducing their HP to zero. This is typically accomplished by using a grab move. Some grab moves deal damage on their own, but another common use is to use the grab to combo into a high damage move that otherwise might be difficult to land. There are many moves which can function as grabs, but perhaps the most popular way to go about building a grappler character is to invest heavily into raptorial upgrades to your character's arms or legs. A few other unique examples do exist. It's possible to also perform a grab using the move coil or even a tether grab. Oftentimes, significant investment into stealth is also necessary in order to create opportunities for your character to get in grab range. Advantages of a class like this include being extremely dominant against players who've chosen lower weight classes. The chance of an opponent breaking free from a grab scales directly with their size relative to yours. The main disadvantage of this build type is that if your opponent does break free or dodge the grapple attempt, a lot of times they'll be in prime position to counterattack. Examples of the grappler build include mantises, frogs, chameleons, spiders, and snakes. But in my opinion, the top tier grapplers are the eagles, crocodiles, and cephalopods. Every style of fighter has their weaknesses, and grapplers tend to struggle against projectile-based builds and also get hard countered by perks like spikes and slime. These next two build types, Rushdown and Spacer, are very similar in that both focus on landing individual strikes on their opponent rather than grabbing them. Rushdown builds focus on getting in close on their targets and dishing out as many hits as they can. Typically one individual strike from a Rushdown build isn't all that strong, but several within a short time frame can bring down even the highest HP targets. Oftentimes rushdown builds will employ team strategies, multiplying the number of hits even further, while minimizing the risk towards one individual player. Because risk is a big part of the rushdown game, when you're in your opponent's face like that, they have ample opportunity to counterattack even if your hits are landing, so you need to really overwhelm them to avoid taking too much damage yourself. Generally, instead of focusing on power, mobility is the most important stat for rushdowns. The advantages of this class include being able to bring down higher HP targets, as well as generally being able to outspeed and escape from opponents that are too tough for you to bring down quickly. Examples include bears, piranhas, and baboons. While top tiers for this category include African wild dogs and falcons. But I thought you just said birds of prey were grapplers. No, I said eagles are grapplers. Eagles deal their damage with their talons, while the typical attack strategy employed by falcons is to knock their opponent out with a swift punch and then finish them with their sharper beaks. See, it pays to understand fighting types, because it can be tough to differentiate between similar looking classes. Rushdown characters struggle against armored targets the most, because armor can often completely negate the damage from weaker attacks. They tend to also have bad matchups against spacing based characters, for reasons I'll discuss in a minute. Spacing based characters try to deal damage to their opponent while remaining out of reach. This is typically accomplished by making use of attacks that have disjointed hitboxes, allowing them to strike or pressure an enemy without risking an immediate counterattack. There are many attributes you can choose from in order to give your character access to moves like this. Some examples would be horns, long claws, armored limbs, and tail weapons. Unlike rushdown builds, spacer builds tend to focus on landing only one or two individual attacks as opposed to a flurry of blows. That's usually all that's needed though, as their individual attacks tend to be extremely devastating when they actually connect. With that said, whiffing an attack like this can leave the user extremely vulnerable once an enemy gets closer than your attack's effective range. Sometimes it's best simply to threaten your opponent with an attack, and just whittle away at their resolve rather than actually attempt an attack. This strategy is extremely effective against rushdown builds, because many of them simply cannot risk taking such a severe hit. Even entire teams of rushdown players can sometimes be too intimidated to make an aggressive play. Examples of spacing-based characters include the Gemspock, Narwhal, and Thresher Shark, while top tiers include builds like the Swordfish, Secretary Bird, and Elk. 
Spacing builds have been declining lately, possibly because rushdown builds, which are normally very bad against spacers, are adapting, learning to bait out laggy moves and punishing them. You'll notice that builds from legacy versions of the game tended to favor spacing a lot more. Stegosaurus, Ankylosaurus, and Therizinosaurus all were extremely successful spacing builds back in the Mesozoic expansion, being excellent at rebelling attacks of rushdown therapy classes. Perhaps the most successful spacer of all time was Triceratops, and it's pretty easy to tell which builds of present day took inspiration from them. Builds which used tail weapons used to be fairly common, but have almost completely fallen off the meta recently, the most recent one being the Glyptodont of the Ice Age. Spacing builds also tend to have poor matchups against grapplers, because typically, once caught in a grab, it's impossible for them to swing their heavy equipment. Overall, these are some of my personal favorite builds, and I hope to see some advancement in their metagame soon. The last category of character is projectile-based. Projectile characters tend to require a ton of investment into a single technique that will hopefully be useful enough to make them viable fighters. The investment into projectiles is costly and difficult to use, but when used the right way they can be extremely difficult to play against. The most common form of projectile is a spray. Using the move spray combined with an acid, glue, or smelly substance can result in a projectile that deals heavy damage, inflicts a poison status effect, reduces mobility, or even just destroys resolve. The other option is flinging a projectile. This requires much less investment from an evolutionary standpoint, but also requires that the user stockpiles items from the environment that can be thrown, making this move much harder to pull off in a pinch. These projectiles tend to be more purely damage focused, although in some cases they can also be aimed at reducing the target's mobility. Now with that said, oftentimes the immediate damage of a projectile is rather weak. So unless you're comboing it into a stronger finishing move, it may not be the greatest use in a close quarters duel. Examples include the Archerfish, Velvet Worm, Bomberger Beetle, and Horn Tiller, while high tier examples include the Spitting Cobra, Tarantula, and Skunk. Projectile characters are really great at dealing with grapplers, since they can just unload on them as they attempt to find a grab. But projectile users tend to struggle against rushdowns, which can usually dish out enough damage in such a short time that the effects of their projectile doesn't really stop them in time to save them. Of course, these categories are by no means hard boundaries. Plenty of builds can hybridize between the two. Scorpions are a mix between Grappler, because of their claws, and Spacing, because of their long-reaching tail bar. Antlions use projectiles in order to knock their targets into their traps, but switch to Grappler once in range. Bucks would normally be considered spacers, but can also switch to full-out rushdown mode in an instant if the situation calls for it. But hey, I hope this guide was useful for those of you who are undecided about who to main in this game. Learning about complex topics by breaking them down into more manageable pieces is a great way to build a foundation of knowledge for yourself. This happens to be the same philosophy that Brilliant.org uses when designing their educational courses, too. I'm a huge fan of how they teach and have learned a lot from them. If you want, you can try their classes for free at Brilliant.org slash Tierzoo. By using that link, you can learn anything from quantum physics to game theory, and you'll be supporting my work in the process. You'll also save 20% on the annual premium subscription if you choose to get their paid membership. But there's plenty of cool free stuff on there worth checking out, too. Anyways, to level up your intelligence stat and support my show in the process, head on over to brilliant.org slash tierzoo. Thanks for watching, and thanks especially to my patrons on Patreon. If you're still here, thanks for sticking with me, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>